Good morning, good evening, good everything in between, wherever you are. Welcome to the podcast, All-Star Weekend Edition. I'm your host, the lovable Jimbo Bernicke, and I'm joined today by my favorite co-host in the world, Mr. Gabe Lerman. You're too kind. I won't be able to fit my head through the virtual studio door. And my other favorite co-host in the world, Mr. Michael Beely. How are you doing, Mike? I'm kind of tired. Yeah, I still haven't quite recovered from last week. I think I'm still on like a bit of a lag. You know what I mean? Like I... Every night, I'm just so sleepy. (laughs) And guess what? You're going to have to do it again in a week and a half. That's true. We do have more games coming up for you, the listeners. But before we get to that, let's get to All-Star Weekend. We are here, and we are now at the halfway point of the season. It's a very exciting time of the year. I wish we got to watch the All-Star Games on our service, but that's all right. We can still keep up with the festivities. I will be looking for a way to find the home home run derby, though. I will tell you that much. So... As we are at the halfway point of the year, I thought we would give out a little halfway uh, awards of the season so far. So let's start with Rookie of the Year. I think the obvious choice is Shunpei Yamashita. Um, Do we all agree on that? Do we need to discuss that anymore? (laughs) I'm the Oryx advocate, so I'm, I'm pulling hard for Yamashita. He became the first Buffaloes pitcher to get eight wins or more before the All Star break in his rookie campaign since 1959. He's on like a 50, 60 year pace. He's only 20 and his ERA is still at 1.49. I am so hyped to see him become uh, the fourth arm in that dangerous Buffalo's bullpen. And Mike, did you have anyone else for rookie of the year? Or are we all we all on the board with that? I think it's pretty set in stone. Yeah, that's that's pretty easy. And for biggest letdown, um, I thought it was a slam dunk until this past week. And we will talk about <laughs> someone being a big letdown this week. But I think for me, it's probably the Cebu Lions. It's uh, I didn't I didn't think they'd be like the best team in the league this year, but it's been rough. It's been hard. I was I was expecting Nippon to be near the bottom, so that would, didn't surprise me so much. But I didn't think Cebu would be this bad. What do you guys think? For me, the biggest letdown has been the a, a couple of guys on the Eagles. Actually, uh, you know, they can't all just be powered by Hideto Asamura, who is doing his level best. He kind of leads the Pacific League in home runs and RBIs right now. But where's Ei Goromogi? Where's Hiroaki Shimauchi? Where's Takaro Kajima? Where's Haruki Nishikawa? There needs to be more offense out of that lineup, especially if they're going to keep up the torrid pace they've been on lately. It's a bit disappointing to see Shimauchi in particular go from 300 batting average to question marks. And yeah, also now that you mention it, uh, I mean, you know, he is a lot older, so people weren't expecting him to be great, but Masahiro Tanaka is having a really rough season, so that that could also be in the running. Mm. What about you, Mike? Uh, I'd say Tanaka probably is the biggest letdown for me, mainly because I am a big Masahiro Tanaka fan, and he's just not Masahiro Tanaka this year. Maybe he'll have something else post-All-Star game. Seibu is a big letdown. I have to hear about that every day because I'm friends with a lot of Seibu fans in Japan <laughs> and they just kind of at me nonstop and send me their woes. Um, I'd say foreign help as a total has kind of been down this year. Mm, that's fair. It's, yeah. It just seems like that's just repeat story every year at this point. Actually, whenever you hear someone going to rake in Japan, ignore <laughs> the person saying that they do not know what they're talking about. Actually, while we were just kind of talking about it and I was thinking about it, I'm really sad Takashi Ogino and um, Seiya Inoue aren't uh, aren't around anymore right now. It's uh, That kind of sucks, too. But, you know, we don't always have to talk about bad stuff. We can talk about good stuff. Biggest surprise of the year for me, Yumatongu. Where'd this guy come from? What's going on there? Like, he's having a superstar season. Uh, definitely wasn't expecting that this year. I think the big surprise for me was seeing Kaima Taida of the Lions successfully convert to a starting pitcher and dominate third in Pacific League in ERA, fourth in strikeouts, fourth in FIP. He has been an absolute phenom and joining Kona Takahashi as the the two in the one-two punch and that Seibu Lions rotation. Yeah, you know, you look at the people ahead of Tyra in those uh, in those statistical categories you were just talking about. It's Sasaki and Yamamoto. You know, it's it's people who are he's in some rarefied air. He's in like a really elite class right now. That's a pretty good call, actually. Uh, my biggest surprise, I'd say probably Yamashita on Oryx, not because I expected him to not perform at the level that he is, but just because he's kind of exceeding, I think, a lot of rookie expectations. And also Oryx kind of reminds me of the Tampa Bay Rays and the fact they seem to be literally inventing pitchers at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's another guy. Oh, there's this guy. Oh, there's that guy. Who's, oh, no, we just called him up. Oh, he's amazing. 
And speaking of great pitching, best pitcher of the year. I think this one we might have some contentious discussion on. I'm going to let Gabe go first. I know the two of you are going to say Hiroki Sasaki, but gosh darn it, it's still Yamamoto to me. And that's you're just going to leave it at that. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty much speaks for itself. And what about you, Mike? <laughs> I mean, it's either or. It's Yamamoto or Sasaki. I'm going to go Sasaki because I'm biased, but it's either or. And so I get the tie break, and I'm going to go with Yoshinobu Yamamoto because I think he's just contributed more. He's he's had more games. He's had He's got a lower ERA. He doesn't have as many Ks. That's true. But he's walked less. I just think he's been a little more effective. It's a, it's a real, you know, 55 to 45 kind of thing. But I uh, double I check your numbers on that, Jimbo. Nope. According to what I'm seeing, Sasaki currently has a lead on Yamamoto by about 0.3 runs in ERA. Yeah. And let's not talk about fielding independent pitching, where Roki Sasaki is at a minuscule 0.74. Wait, what am He's I only at? allowing an opponent average of 0.151. Oh, am I looking at the wrong? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong week. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I, I had two things open and I'm like a full week behind. Okay, well, well, it's okay, then Sasaki it is. <laughs> but no, I still I still think Yamamoto's kind of been more consistent that nah, actually no, nah, that really now that I'm looking at the numbers, I don't know what eh, I don't know. I think that where yeah. you might be seeing is that it is the volume of pitching. That's the Yamamoto's thing. able to go full games, complete games. Sasaki still hasn't had as dominant of a start in terms of longevity as he did in his perfecto with 19 strikeouts last season. We're still waiting for, for that arm to get stretched out to the point where it can go eight, nine innings and come away with a shutout. Yeah, man, his opponent average of one five one. That's disgusting. <laughs> like that. That's really scary. Okay. Yeah. If every pit, <laughs> if every batter you face is batting below the Mendoza line, you are doing something incredible. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, call it a tie. Let's give it both. Let's give. Yeah, it both. we may not have an answer on this one till the end of the season. <laughs> that's fair. And even then, we'll probably still be debating it. And so finally, what about MVP? Now, I don't know about you guys. I have I have like MVP voting kind of biases and rules. I really don't like giving it to pitchers unless like they're really the best player in the league by a wide margin. But I like just... Yamamoto the last two seasons. Yeah, like that one makes sense. And even like you could definitely make the argument for Sasaki this year. I still just prefer giving it to a batter. Um, but then I also I struggle with, you know, like Tomoya Mori comes to mind, but he's just got so much support in that lineup. And then you look at somebody like, and then there's sort of the emotional vote. Like I kind of want to go with Takeya Nakamura because providing so much of the Lions offense, even though they're really bad, he's just doing so much work by himself at 40. Uh, so naturally I'm going to go with Yuki Yanagita. <laughs> I mean, Yanagita has <laughs> a pretty good pick. He leads the league in OPS. He's among the league leaders in RBIs and home runs. He's just, uh, I've seen him because, I mean, you know, I watch a lot of Hawks games. I've just seen him win games like by himself, basically. And um, again, it's it's sort of a toss up. I think by the end of the season, Hideto As- Asamura could totally be, be the MVP, especially if the Eagles keep this tear they're on. Or Sasaki could be if he just kicks it into another gear. Um, it's, it's really up in the air. We've got a lot of really great seasons going on. What do you think? So I'm going to go with a different Hawk. I think Kensuke Kondo gets my vote for Mm. MVP. The on-base percentage is up there with his usual seasons up in the the low 400s. The power has shown up. 12 home runs on the season so far. I think that's a new career high for him. Mm -hmm. And he's right behind Yanagita on the OPS leaderboard, where I think Kondo gets the nod in terms of MVP votes, is that he is primarily an outfielder who can play center in a pinch and is more comfortable in the corners as opposed to Yanagita, who at this stage in his career is a right fielder primarily, D8, or is a DH primarily, right fielder on occasion. I just did a highlight reel for him in the top 20 plays for week 13, should become coming out soon so i think kondo gets the nod i will say that voters for the real mvp like to go for a team that made the playoffs just like they do in the majors so if the hawks miss or the eagles miss 
that kind of misses Yanagita, Kondo, or Asamura. That's fair. That's fair. What do you think, Mike? Uh, I haven't really thought much about the MVP at this point yet. Uh, I would say Yanagita. I think Yanagita's got a good case for another one. I do like giving it to pitchers. Um, I would pick Yamamoto or Sasaki for that. Probably give the edge to Yamamoto because he does go deeper in games, like you mentioned. And for Sasaki, the best ability is availability, and he did have that weird almost missed month with a blister. Yeah, I still yeah, that think was, about that. That was that so was really weird. odd. I mean, it must have been a hell of a blister. <laughs> I mean, there's no pictures of her from what I can tell, but uh, Kondo, uh, another good choice. Um, Maybe Mori. Well, I mean, now he's injured. So, I mean, that's the thing that like, I think I think Mori was a really good pick until he got injured and the Buffaloes are still chugging along. That kind of yeah, hurts a good point. The, in, in, in my uh, in my opinion. But if if it weren't for that, like if he started missing games and the Buffaloes started losing games, I think that would help his argument a lot. But other than that, he's been having an amazing season. Yeah, at this point, I'd say probably Yanagita, but I'd have to uh, reevaluate as it goes on. That's fair. And yeah, so we're, we're, I... we're not we're just writing these in pencil, Mike, not pen. Yeah, it's, it's I'm using permanent marker. <laughs> and so that'll bring us over to um, what uh, what news headlines did you have for us this week, Mike? So uh, here it is. Um, I couldn't find much news this week because most of my news sources that I read stopped reporting on anything PL related. It seems. But I did find one news report that I found just to be kind of funny. Um, Apparently, Oryx players were interviewed about which player on their team they felt was secretly an alien. Which player do you think is secretly an alien? I would go with Sugimoto. Gabe? I'd go with Mune. Ooh. Me personally, I would say Yamamoto. He seems kind of out of this world. Yeah, but, you know, um, a little bit. Yeah, actually, I get that one too. <laughs> but according to his teammates, uh, the Oryx Buffaloes players feel that Hiroya Miyagi is secretly a space alien. Okay, Okinawa's not that far away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an hour plane ride depending is where that, you're at. So. Is that why? Is that strictly why? Because it's from Okinawa? Because I, I can't it, think of It did not reason. say. <laughs> Just said that they were, the interviewer was happy that the players answered his silly question and he did not get, expect to get a real answer. Oh, good for him. It's funny they brought this up with Miyagi because former Buffalo Yoshio Itoi, his nickname was Alien. Huh. That dude was jacked. So, something about the name Yoshio Itoi sounds does sound alieny. I want to see it. Oh, yo, he is jacked. Whoa. He was. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine actually met him in person at like a special like meet and greet, and he's just apparently massive. Looks way bigger than his listed height. Yeah, no, man, he's got broad shoulders. That's a big dude there. <laughs> Speaking of Miyagi, I wanted to bring this up during the the round the horn, but because it deals with multiple teams, now's a good time to bring it up. I haven't seen this before, but there's now going to be collaboration merchandise coming out representing the friendship between Roki Sasaki and Hiroya Miyagi. Normally, these sorts of things comes out after the players retire or if they were on the same team before. This is the first time anyone's seeing two active players on different teams who never played with each other getting merch both the buffaloes and marines will be selling it you can visit the team sites for more information that's really cool that's super cool okay i'd love to see that yeah so, i saw that it was like this pastel kind of watercolor drawing on the merch of them like you know with their hands behind each other's backs or whatever that's sweet Alrighty, and over to um gabe for your headlines this week so we have our final all-star rosters by the time you listen to this the all-star games will be complete a special congratulations to Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who got the plus one final vote selection, correcting a potentially historic oversight. We also called the Home Run Derby participants exactly. Takaya Nakamura Okawari-kun got the final fourth spot, so that's great news to see. Also, the fresh All-Star game took place earlier today, since the minor leagues in Japan are aligned geographically instead of by sub-league, the PL's future stars were spread across both teams. Some familiar names who've logged innings with the top club already featured into the game. For the Eastern League, the fighters sent Kota Yazawa, our two-way phenom in the making, and infielders Ryohei Hosokawa and Taiki Narama. Narama, I think, hit his first uh, home run earlier this season. Marines sent infielder Atsuki Tomosugi, who's made his appearance on a couple of top 20 plays reels. And the line sent catcher Takeru Furuichi and Takuya Hiruma, an outfielder. For the Western League, the Buffalo sent Ryusei Soltani, to Jimbo's point, the next pitcher coming out of the lab. And utility man Tomoya Noguchi, who normally plays infield, but I have a highlight of him playing right field and gunning a guy down at third. It's impressive. 
And the Hawks send their future catcher, Riku Watanabe. Keep those names in mind for the future. I did a little bit of digging into the All-Star game. So mini history corner here. The first one was played in the second year of the two-league modern NPB in 1951. And it was a three-game series back then. One game at Koshien, two at Korakuen. The PL won only one of those three, but then went won one and drew the other the next year and went two and one the year following. Since then, the PL has won the bulk of the All-Star games on average. And for a few of those years, the All-Star teams were limited to two foreign players, just like the regular clubs were. That probably kept a number of strong foreign players out of the All-Star game. Last year, the Pacific League swept both games, both by one-run margins, and one of those was a Kotaro Kiyomiya solo walk-off shot in the ninth. And finally, next season's two-game set will take place at Meiji Jingu in Tokyo and S. Confield Hokkaido in Kita Hiroshima. So that would be the newest to open and the soonest to be replaced ballparks, respectively. Oh, or that's a weird in reverse. Little, yeah, that's yeah. a weird little uh, parallel there. That's kind of cool. Uh, before we move on to the round the horn, actually, I want to get your guys' um, home run derby predictions. Who do you guys think is going to win? I'm going to go with Yanagita. Mm, okay, interesting. And Mike? Nakamura. You know what? That's where I'm going to. I, I, I mean, I think really I want Nakamura to win. That's that's like my that's like my heart pick. Um, I think Sugimoto's got a really good chance, but um, no, I I, I really really want to see Nakamura win it. So that's what I'm going to go with. And keep in mind, the bracket is on two separate days. The A, B, C, and D competitors, so two from the PL, two from the other league, will be batting tomorrow Japan time. The other four and then the finals will take place the following day. So different field conditions, different bodies and physical conditions. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Oh, I didn't think about that. It's a two-day event. I'm going, no, I'm going Sugimoto then. I worry about Nakamura going two days. I, I just, I don't know, but I don't know if he'll recover as, as well as like a younger body might. Then again, now I'm thinking Minami. I think Minami might just be ready for it, but anyway, we'll see. I, I've I've done the right thing and just picked everyone except Yana there. You Yana. go, <laughs> and that brings us to our first ad break of the evening. Take a listen. Hey, my name's Shane, and I swear I'm a real consumer, just like you. So I just replaced all my expensive shorts with. What are you doing in here? I oh, thought uh, I threw you out uh, already. I gotta go. Bye. How do they keep getting in here? That's the third advertiser I've thrown out today. When you subscribe to Pacific League TV, there's no ads, nothing in between innings, nothing for a pitching change. You get to see all the action on the field. And of course, you also get full archives going back to 2011. All the baseball you could ever want to watch and nobody trying to convince you to buy some clothing brand you've never heard of. 1450 yen per month. That's like 10 bucks in today's exchange rate. And you get all that and no ads. Okay, but for real, who's letting these guys in here? Jim? Gabe? Is it any of you? Well, it's not me. All right, and we're back. And that brings us to our Around the Horn segment. Every week, we take an in-depth look at all the Pacific League teams from top to bottom and give you our little insights and breakdowns of what's going on this week. And as usual, as we've gotten quite accustomed to, we kick off the week with the Oryx Buffaloes sitting in first. Gabe, take it away. You can't see because we don't have cameras on, but I am grinning from ear to ear, man. Seven and three in their last 10. They won their last three in a row going into the All-Star break and are now three and a half games clear of the Marines for the Pacific League. Let's go. I missed this before, but I want to send my congrats and bonsai to the June Players of the Month, both of whom are Buffaloes. First baseman Yuma Tongu slashed 372, 444, 731 with seven home runs in the month of June, while lefty pitcher Sachiya Yamasaki, who you saw on the June 25th midnight matinee, went 4-0 with a 2.33 ERA and 21 strikeouts over 27 innings. Tongu is still leading the Pacific League with a 318 batting average and sits third in OPS with 896. I mentioned uh, Shunpei Tayamashita and his historical achievement before. And Leandro Cedeno is doing his best to make Buffalo's fans not miss Toma Yamori. He's hit four home runs in his last six games. And it's great to see the slugger capitalize on his potential. And we've met, you know, Jimbo, you mentioned before foreign players being somewhat of a disappointment at times. Cedeno is delivering at the moment. I also want to give a shout out to Hiroya Miyagi, the quote unquote extraterrestrial. 
He's in the top five of, in ERA in the Pacific League now, sitting at 2.42, and third in fielding independent pitching at 2.49. So whenever ERA and FIP more or less agree, it means that the pitcher's not getting extremely lucky or unlucky. Miyagi's just dealing and delivering right now. And that brings us over to the second place team, your favorite team and mine, everyone's favorite team except Gabe's, the Chibo Lote Marines. Take it away, Mike. I do like the Lotte Marines. How'd you know that? Anyway, <laughs> Roki Sasaki now leads the Pacific League in ERA and strikeouts, along with a 0.74 FIP and a 696 whip. That rhymes. He's two <laughs> wins behind Yamamoto for the Triple Crown. That's pretty good, in my opinion. I don't know about you guys. That's pretty good. Starter Yuji Nishino has been diagnosed with right arm discomfort and may be out for a little while. So another injury plagues Lotte, who has been haunted by the injury bug pretty much all season, it seems, at this point. 7-3 and three in their last 10. They played a pretty big series against the surging Rockton Eagles. What a, what a um, weird phrase to say. Like it's, I it's know. Like Let's go back out. a couple episodes and just think, what? <laughs> uh, overall, Rockton took the series, which is something I also didn't expect to say today. Uh, Gary Polanco had a three home run game uh, Sunday, July 16th. Went four for five overall with three RBI. That was a pretty good... Uh, Go watch the clips on the YouTube channel of the three home runs. Like the first one, obviously he's happy at home run. The second one, you know, he's pretty happy. The third one, he's so static from running around the base that he's out of breath by the time he gets to his <laughs> uh like camera pose where he says power. And that whole series felt really good. Like it's just, se- I know we say like every game seems like a playoff game, but it seems like both crowds had a little bit extra for that series. And rightfully so for the Rockton, um, Rockton fans, because uh, Rockton's doing really well as we'll cover. Um, the strategy remains the same as is where everyone beat up on the teams that you're supposed to be beating up on. Don't get swept by the, your fellow A-class members. And Roki Sasaki's brother, Reiki, recently pitched his first game this summer. He was clocked at 88 miles per hour as a tournament uh, begins in Iwate amongst all Iwate high, school, high schools. And I think his uh, fastball has gained a few ticks since we last covered him. Let's go this promising for him. And so that brings us over to the third place team, the SoftBank Hawks. Um, it's been a rough couple days. <laughs> They're in the midst of a catastrophic slide, losing every game since we last spoke, and it's one in nine now in their last ten. The offense has completely evaporated, and you can chalk some of that up to running into elite pitchers like Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Yamashita, but that doesn't bode well for playoff time. Like you're going to be facing those guys a lot and uh, it's looking good right now. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It just feels like everyone collectively forgot how to bat. I know we were talking about one run games uh, last week and it's been a lot of one and two run game losses. Just the games they were winning earlier in the year, they are losing a lot of now. Um, Also, Levan Moinello, my one of my favorite players is out for the season after going on elbow surgery. It's, that sucks. So you've lost half of the best one two bullpen punch in the uh, in the league. This is the first time this season I do not feel like the Hawks are going to win the pennant. Uh, this is rough. This is very rough. Um, positives to build on? Carter Stewart continues to improve. He did get smacked around by the Lions last week, but he had a really solid game against the Buffaloes. Hopefully he continues to improve, continues to find his footing. And the Hawks are also one of the best defensive teams in the league, uh, as per SIS Baseball on Twitter. That's something, I guess. Uh, so let's, let's keep building on that. Then again, the other, you know, the two and three best defensive teams in the league are the Fighters and Lions, which uh, that's not great company. <laughs> that's, uh, that's sort of a bad group to be part of now that I think about it. But yeah. Let's go. One thing to, ch- <laughs> oh, one thing to chime in on uh, Moinello's departure, it does mean that the Hawks do have another foreign player slot that they can use. I noticed that around the All Star break, some teams in the NPB will be shuffling their rosters around, letting go of certain foreign players and adding new ones. Look for the Hawks to possibly be active on the free agent market to fill that spot. Maybe a little Max Scherzer, a little Clayton Kershaw, <laughs> a little unattainable player. <laughs> I don't know who they could find to to, to replace Moinello because Moinello was so good. He was so lights out. Oh, it, it hurts to know that I won't be able to see him pitch again this season. Um, but anyway, my depression aside, that brings us over to a team that's definitely not depressed. The Rackerton Golden Eagles have come out of nowhere. Mike, take it away. 
Uh, one quick comment on before that about uh, your unattainable players. It kind of sounded like you were playing out of the park in commissioner mode for a second. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, like <laughs> hey, why don't I? Hey, why don't I just get uh, Aaron Judge? How's that, how's that sound? I need some bats. <laughs> Sorry, I won't sound. Make routine. this work now. <laughs> Make this work now. Oh, I don't want to sign editor. Yes, you do. <laughs> anyway, uh, what did you say? SoftBank's uh, last ten was again. It was one and nine. That's interesting because Rockton is nine and one. There you go. Rockton fans, you can come out of hiding now, at least for a moment. Your time is now. 9-1 in the last 10, surging to get into a better position to sneak their way into the playoffs. Once again, this sounds really odd to say. The change in batting coach must be really helpful at this point because everybody looks to be like a completely different hitter as they were earlier in the season. Like, when they win, they're not like these like cheap one-run wins. They are completely dominating everybody else. Every score in this Lotte series was high-scoring. And it was I don't think Rockton fans are worried about Rockton losing the league or, you know, not having the league because they're just going to come out swinging and just take it back. Hideto Asamura is now leading the team in every single offensive category other than stolen bases. He's raised his average up to 270. And if you go back to a couple episodes ago, we were talking about how he was batting like 230 and I was like leading the team. Uh, his slash on is 271, 351, 841. And overall, I credit their change at this point to that change in batting coach. I think a, bre- a new way of thinking in the clubhouse has really turned that team around. Yeah, it's the only time I can think of in my time watching baseball where there was like a coaching change and there's been an immediate mark difference from that point on. Like, it's crazy the way the team's like just evolved. And that brings us over to that brings us over to a team that's doing their best <laughs> as the Sable Lions have clawed their way out of the basement by mere percentage points of difference. But hey, they're doing it. And they've earned the spot after winning six streaks, sweeping both the reeling Hawks and Fighters. Now, it doesn't sound that great when you beat teams that are losing, but you got to beat the teams that are in front of you. And they've done it, which they haven't been doing most of the year. And, you know, early in previous episodes, we've spoken about how the team has the talent. They just all need to get on the same page and perform at the same time. And that's been happening. Finally, we're getting support from the middle of the order you know, um, but McKinnon and Nakamura, Tonosaki have have all been producing at a high level, and the pitching's been really good. Time uh, Kaimatara has been good, and yeah, it's all coming together finally. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been nice to be watching the Cebu again. It's it <laughs> after a little period there where things were really depressing. It's been a nice little uptick in hope. I st- they are not making the playoffs. I feel comfortable in saying that they are not going to make some crazy run here. But I think they might have enough spunk to not finish last in the league and speaking of last in the league i mean i thought the, i thought the hawks were doing bad uh let's bring it over to the nippon ham fighters gabe oof ouch my soul the fighters set the modern npb record by having seven consecutive one run losses the next game that streak broke because they <laughs> lost by two runs They've lost 10 in a row now, and as a result, have returned to the bottom of the Pacific League, are 16 back of the Buffaloes. This is the first 10-game losing streak in six years. Ah, The thing is, with one-run games, they're a coin flip. They could have just as easily won all seven of those with just slightly better batted ball luck or maybe one fewer base running mistake. It's just tough. And it's sad to see the momentum that they built up over the last month dissipate in the blink of an eye. This game can be cruel. I do want to finish on some positive vibes, though. Again, thanks to SIS Baseball for bringing the advanced stats to NPB. Torai Fushimi, the primary catcher for the Fighters, is tied for second best catcher in defensive runs saved across all NPB. And all the other guys in front of him are other league guys. So that makes him the best in the Pacific. That's the value of pitch framing, something Fushimi brought with him from the Buffaloes and learning how to frame pitches better for guys like Yamamoto, Yamasaki, and Miyagi. Now he's able to do that with Uesawa, Ito, and Kato. And congratulations to Ariel Martinez, the Cuban catcher, for reaching double-digit home runs for the first time in his NPD career back on July 13th. He only got eight with the Dragons last year in 82 games, Needless to say, he's enjoying the confines in Kita Hiroshima a little bit better, and he's starting to find that power stroke. If some of these terms can sometimes confuse you, don't worry. 
that's what How to Speak Pacific League is all about. The next edition of that's coming up next. How to Speak Pacific League. Lesson 5. Base Running. The fastest runners in the Pacific League, like Ukyo Shuto or Akito Takabe, will be stealing bases on the regular, so it's helpful to cover some relevant terms. Loan words are used for the rido a runner gets, as well as a good jump or stato to the next base. A retreat back to the base is referred to as a modoru, Japanese for to return. A successful steal is a torui, combining the kanji for steal and base. Add a shi at the end for death to say caught stealing. And of course, if someone is not exactly fleet of foot, they can be subbed out for a daiso or pinch runner. That brings us to one of our last segments here. How are our familiar faces doing stateside? Gabe, take it away. Former Oryx Buffalo and current Boston Red Stocking, Masataka Yoshida has had multiple hits in 36 of his first 81 MLB games. That ties the legendary Johnny Pesky for that record as a Boston Red Sox, and only a dozen MLB players in all of history have had more than that. He's that good. It's helped Yoshida earn midseason American League Rookie of the Year, according to MLB on Fox. So... That's impressive. We knew he was going to be able to do that. Now everyone else is listening to us. Oh, and some guy by the name of Shohei Ohtani has 35 home runs on the season. He could challenge for the American League record that Aaron Judge set last year. And he pitches pretty well, too. <sighs> what more can you say? It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good <laughs> i just checked the angel score and it was uh they had, they had two runs and i immediately hit that box score to see whose rbi they were it's like please be show ace and no it's mickey moniac ah boo boo oh, once i saw the zero Shohei. under the thing i just clicked out the window <laughs> show nope uh, okay bye no, yep not interested <laughs> show hey no hey bye <laughs> all right and that brings us over to our question of the day from sven dentman Speaking of home runs in the Pacific League, who will hit the most home runs in the PL this year? Mike, what do you think? Probably Monami. That's my guess at this point. Mm, okay, interesting. And what about you, Gabe? I don't think Tongu or Monami catch up to the guy who's currently three ahead of everyone and basically is the driving engine of the Eagles offense. I'm putting him for Asamuda. I don't think he's led the league in home runs yet. No, yeah, and he really has come out of nowhere on that. On that, and so I'm kind of between. If Mori wasn't injured, I'd say Mori. I think yanagita has got a shot, but I'm not sure how he'll hold up throughout the season. If the fighters weren't doing so badly, I'd say Benami. But then I'm also worried with Asamura. It's kind of like I feel like it's a bit of a flash in the pan. Like I'm, I'm you know, he's great. He's going to keep hitting home runs in general. But I think he's on a bit of a tear, and I he might cool off at some point. But he does have a three home run lead, kind of a coin flip. I'm going to go with Yuki Yanagita. <laughs> That's like Part the of... second time this podcast you've head faked and said, "Oh, could be this guy, could be this guy." No, Yanagita. <laughs> <laughs> that is how usually how I make all my takes. I'm like, "Oh, it could be this, could be this." I guess I'll just go with Yanagita. <laughs> I secretly want it to be Sugimoto. I just don't know if that'll if he'll go on a crazy surge or whatever. I think he could lead in like RBI by the end of the season, maybe, but I don't know if it'll be home runs. And so that brings the question over to you, the listener. Who do you think will lead the PL in home runs this year? Please leave a comment and let us know what you think. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast. Thank you as always for listening and do all that YouTube stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please comment so we can get more questions for next week. And try to enjoy the All-Star Week festivities. And we'll be back with you next week with more Pacific League action. Take care. <laughs>